you were involved with attorney Moore in protesting the Confederate element of that Mississippi flag. You are on the front lines when it comes uh, to so many social justice issues. And you went to the essence celebration of uh, black women in Hollywood looking, as they would say, fierce and fabulous. Let's, let's just, first of all, acknowledge the aesthetic articulation of chocolate charm and ebony ecstasy that you embody. Let's just, let's just, let's just acknowledge that. Finer than cat's whiskers. We got to acknowledge that. And then with that genius you possess and that brilliance and that writerly skill to have written on your dress the word queer. And what was so funny to me, I was reading your response when you were saying, I, I think folk thought it said queen. <laughs> Which could be an allusion to black gay aesthetic, right? So you just captured it all, right? You, kept, you, you, you captured it. You got Billy Porter, RuPaul, and everybody else, right? With, with that fierceness. But talk to us about that not so subtle, subtle revelation of the intense interiority of your identity as a human being, as a sexualized human being, and as a, a woman who fully embraces who she is on this earth without apology or excuse. Yeah, you know, I talked about that, you know, Baptist, um, that Baptist, uh, tradition that's my heart that's that's that you know I, that I was raised in and there ain't no place for me mm. in that there was no place for me in that and so there was a whole lot of reprogramming that I did on my own because I knew that I wasn't you know attracted to boys in the way that I was supposed to be attracted to boys um and there was no template you know, there was nothing. There was no template, and no, and and the examples of that were women who were exiled. So you know, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be Miss Pearl who work at the right. at the florist. You know what I mean? I don't want to be her. I don't want to be Angie, who everybody talks about because everybody knows she's gay. I don't want to be that. So I, I I gotta I can't I can't live my life like that. So. I'm already weird. I'm already strange. And then I'm going to add to it that I don't like girls, you know? Um, so I literally, oh there was boy. a summer where I said, okay, there's, yeah, there's a summer where I was like, I got to, I got to program myself to like boys before mm. I go back to school. And I just really, I really worked on it. Like, like the, the books that I had to read that summer, like it was like a project that I had to do for the summer. Anyway, um, and then that's so that's what I was struggling with my whole childhood. I was struggling with that. And you know, I had a, and nobody in my household was saying, you know, it's wrong to be gay. You know what I mean? Nobody was saying that. And nobody ever said anything like that in my house or even, even in my community, really. You know, there was no, when nobody, you know, even though everybody's like, yeah, that's Pearl. You know what I mean? Pearl could come to the cookout. Right, right, you know right. what I mean? Pearl can live her, you know? You just don't talk about it, though. You just don't talk about it. And to and the reality is it's still very much, it's still very much like that now. You know, you 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 can be that way, but you just can't, you know, just certain things you just right. don't do. Right. You know what I mean? You know, you have like the visionary of someone like E. Dewey Smith, who you know did that sermon you know, um, years and years ago and stood in a Baptist church and said, this thing that y'all are doing, which is uh, um, treating treating gay people like they're shit has got to stop because, you know, this, this, is in, this is another inconsistency that is in the Bible along with several other inconsistencies and you can't, you can't support it logically, so stop it. Right. So stop it. But at the same time, you have a brave person like that doing that, but they ain't marrying nobody in these churches. It's like, yeah, we want you to come. We love you. You know what I mean? Our, our, our arms are wide open, but ain't nobody marrying nobody in them churches. That's not happening. 
Unless you know something different. That's... No, I mean, I've married that way, but it wasn't in them churches. <laughs> it wasn't in them wasn't churches. In them church? Yeah. That's not and this, so yeah, so 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 there's that. And then you know, in the last couple of years, uh, Michael, you know, I I my uh, presumption was that I have a very I, I'm in an industry. I'm I, my profession, my profession, not industry. My profession is is a very progressive one. That was my presumption, right? But I just had to deal in these last couple of years. This is po- pandemic time dealing with people who were saying these just really homophobic, homophobic, queerphobic, bigoted things to me, to me. And so I'm sitting there, sit, and these were, these were black women who were saying these things to me. And so I'm sitting here going, okay, I don't want these people to hate me, but I can't sit here in silence, you know, because if I'm silent and I'm complicit in the bigotry, and then I'm like, Say what does it say about what I think about myself, even though I'm I'm out with everybody, you know. But they, there's a presumption made that we all straight up in here, everybody's straight up in here, right? So we can say these things, and that happened to me mm. constantly in several in several several moments where I just, you know, I'm, I'm talking to a woman and she was complaining because she had to kiss a woman in the scene, and I was just like, yo. Anyway, I got tired of it. I got tired of it. And I just knew that I had to be, you know, I had to be more present. I had to be more open about it. So to shut these folks up. So I went to an event that celebrated black women. You know, some of those black women who who might have said those things might have been in that audience. And I put that word, I put queer on me. I wore my feelings Mm. on my sleeves. And I'm very, I'm very happy that I did it, you know, because I, I feel like, you know, there's this, oh, I'm so glad you're, I'm like, I'm not out. I've been in, I, I'm, I ain't got to do nothing. I'm me, you know, but the other thing that happened was that people reached out to me, people who have not done that and they thanked me for doing it. So I said, okay, there is that I, I was glad that I did it, you know, Lil Nas X you know, feeling like he wasn't invited to the BET Awards, wasn't nominated for anything because he talked about not apologetic. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, it's right. just too much. That's it's just right. too much. Right, right. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm like, yeah, that's why, that's why you got to say this mm-hmm. stuff. That is why. Well, it's ironic that the ostensible reason that some people had, well, look at him, he's embracing the devil. Wait a minute, let me get this right. So you told him all his life he was going to go to hell if he was gay. He then portrays for you what that looks like, frolicking in hell, but you blame him through your narrow Christian prism when all he's doing is reflecting back to you the paradox of your assertion that he is soulless and without Christ and therefore beyond redemption Mm -hmm. because of his sexual orientation yeah I've, I've been in that battle as a baptist preacher for the last 43 years trust and believe uh i've been on the on the front uh lines in that battle of opening space within these religious traditions in these sanctuaries that exploit black people because i tell i tell black churches i said i ain't never been to no black church that turns down gay tides if you're gonna be real about it i, I ain't never seen you say that come on now and Come and I on. said, you ain't kicking them Come out on. the choir because you ain't gonna have no music. For quiet as a step, you might not yeah. have no preaching. Lord yeah. Jesus, might not have might no preaching. Have All right. Preaching. So so Come what on. you did was let's have a let's have yes, a real reckoning that's... about that. Let's have a real reckoning about that. You know, and, th- and let me let me say this, Michael. You know that listen. Another thing, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey. Like. I am what I am because of the black church. I am what I am. And before, you know, pre-pandemic, I was on I was in somebody's church on Sunday morning. That's where I was. And and the reason why I ain't got nothing to do with no Jesus, not no white Jesus anyway. 
The reason why I was there is because I know my evidence of God is the survival of black people. I know that there is something that happened between between the shores of West Africa and and Virginia, wherever those boats landed. Something happened there that don't have nothing to do with skin and bones. I know that. And I know that a, that a, that a, that, a, that a kind of fellowship developed in that experience that we, you and I live right now. That is what God is to me. So when I'm in church on Sunday mornings, when I'm there, I am in fellowship with that. That is what I'm in, that, and that is alive and that is what God is to me. That is what God is to me. Now, having said all that, I embrace that. That is what I am. I will I will fight for the survival of the black church. But this other stuff where we we try to pretend like we wouldn't have we, the church could survive without gay folks, without queer folks, and without women. Amen. That's not, not that's sustainable not sustainable. That's not that's not sustainable. It's a lie. It's a lie. And, and, and so what I'm, what, you know, the other thing that I'm, that, that I'm doing, you know, is, is, um, you know, and is, is standing up to that, you know, and, and confronting that because it has to be confronted and I'm not interested in conversation. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in confrontation. And this to me has, this, this to me is, 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 it, it, it needs to happen because of particularly this issue that is happening now with you know Roe v. Wade. Now, I'm just gonna say this, and I'm 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 gonna leave it alone because I'm not trying no, to you know hold it, up your, hold up your questions. But but um, you know wh- where is how is the black church gonna protect black women? You know how 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 is the black church going to protect black women? Because it doesn't matter how you feel about abortion. Doesn't matter how you feel about abortion. But what it should matter to you is this Supreme Court deciding that only dead white men have a say in the lives of black women. Mm-hmm. Only dead white men, only, only dead white men can have a say in the reproductive lives, in the health, in the existence, the very existence, continued existence of black women. That should yeah. make you mad. It <laughs> yeah. should make yeah. you angry. Because check this out. You would have no church if it wasn't for black women. You would not have no church. Who in these last two years, when these church, church churches are closing their doors left and right, right because people can't come, they just have in church online, who was sustaining it? Who was sustaining it? Who kept it going? Black women. Black women were doing that, as they always have. And yet in the face of this health crisis, because of this decision, you say nothing? No, I know you're saying something. I'm not yeah. talking about you. You know, you say nothing. You get up on the, the, the Sunday after that happens, and you're talking about spiritual breakthroughs? No, no, sir. And I say, sir. Because I'm speaking to the patriarchy that that sustains in these in these spaces. You're talking about spiritual breakthroughs. So let because I think the idea is if I tell you something that'll make you feel good, you'll keep coming. So I can't say you know I can't talk about that life. I can't talk about what's going on outside these doors because I don't want to make you feel bad. Absolutely. 